live uh, here on Alchemical Records. My name is Daniel Warren Hill. I'm the founder. Um, around 2008 and 2009, I created a, a fictitious record label that uh, when I put the logo on the back of a CD in 2011 uh, for alternative rock band Yellow Tie Guy, a band that I sang and played guitar and, and was a uh, principal songwriter in, uh, people kind of gravitated towards the concept that there was uh, you know, a record label attached to it. And so it usually inspired conversations and that eventually led to Alchemical Records, uh, working with a couple of artists for probably about seven years, um, more or less. And in 2017, we uh, started transitioning into music news and entertainment platform, uh, that you see it as today. Uh, now in October, we're looking to, uh, we're looking to launch our physical zine, uh, and we also just speak with a lot of artists. We speak with a lot of, of managers, PR reps. Uh, our goal has always been just to try to lift up the music news, uh, uh, like the music community inside of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area that we lovingly refer to as uh, the DMV music scene. Um, that's kind of expanded into covering artists worldwide. Uh, now, uh, in part of like launching this uh, this subscription to our uh to our pr physical uh, printed zine the objective is to try to uh, like create content for patreon which we've chosen as being one of the platforms where people can subscribe um, if you are interested in subscribing uh, you can uh, visit us at www.alchemicalrecords.com slash magazine i'll put it here into screen for everybody to see. Um, so we just launched that page this month. And at the same time, we also launched our, we also launched our Patreon. Um, and we wanted to give people flexibility with how they were able to subscribe to the magazine. So uh, we'll have content that's going to our Patreon supporters, but you can also just subscribe uh, through a uh, debit or credit card or through your PayPal account. So all of this is to say that uh, I was inspired by this kind of newness uh, to launch this program. For the last couple of years, uh, I've been, uh, my background in music, uh, you know, my, my claim to fame is really just uh, the, being a successful musician in the Washington DC area for me meant paying the mortgage for uh, probably six years uh, where I was doing uh, music full time and performing in the DMV. And so I've always wanted to try to bring this, uh, this experience of these, the, my version of success, which I think a lot of artists are actually looking for. I wanted to try to bring that into a conversation. Um, it inspired me to start writing a book, which I'm still in progress of, and which might be some of the content that we share here on, uh, this conversation at a future date. Um, the, uh, the goal of this was to say, okay, well, we're creating something from scratch. We, we have had this magazine for a while and maybe for you, you're creating music or maybe for you, you're creating a Twitch channel or, uh, you know, you are a painter, graphic designer. Uh, honestly, I find that I'm just as easily fascinated with uh, paint pouring videos of, you know, and, and colors appearing on a canvas that way. Um, as I am with uh, watching somebody paint by hand and I, I think it's great when artists bring us into their environment to tell us how they're creating or to let us watch them create. And I thought that this would be fun for us to try to bring that, that, that part of the, the conversation into uh, developing content for our Patreon. So I'm sharing myself. Why am I sharing myself? That's silly. So what am, where's my screen? Okay. So we, uh, we launched our Patreon and it has some old posts on it that are just kind of uh, from when we had done a prototype of our printed zine back in 2020. We had Emma G on the cover. Uh, Alex Alave was uh, instrumental in, in actually developing this um, prototype for us. We released it uh, through a handful of comic book uh, stores around the Washington DC metropolitan area. 
And, uh, and that's kind of the format that we're going for is uh, something that would be collectible, uh, something that feels really familiar and something as well that artistically brings uh, the artwork of, of comics into what we're doing. There will be photographers and graphic designers and um, just some one-offs like over here, uh, Jake Warnfeltz uh, from Washington, D.C., the Washington, D.C. area. He's in a band called Crooks and Crows, and he developed this uh, little bit for our prototype uh, with his just kind of a an example of the kinds of things where multi-talented artists are able to kind of bring some content into what we're we're developing there. But all of that begins with some themes. Um, obviously, as a music news and entertainment website, uh, the bulk of what we do is editorial content. We put out 20 or 30 pieces of content every week. And uh, it began with me, and then it uh, <laughs> snowballed it from two or three people. We had some web design from uh, 110 RPM, uh, Mark Beeson and, and his wife. Uh, Karen and uh, we ended up with this design, which has really served us um, fantastically over the last uh, three or four years. We've got now about ten writers located around the Washington D.C. area, and uh, we're covering live music and events in the D.M.V. So we're creating this content from scratch. We could dig deep into like how we get uh, the sources for these pieces. Um, that's constantly in transition and we're constantly growing and evolving that we do, um, we do some submissions through submit hub and then, uh, we receive about half our submissions from email at first that was very, uh, like artist one-on-one. -on -one. And then over time we started to get more, uh, more submissions through PR reps and agents and things of that nature. Uh, and part of our growth is to try to also establish some of these live stream things, uh, you know, opportunities to meet with us. Uh, our team just did a live stream, our first live stream as a team last night, uh, which was broadcast to Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And we talked about the uh, 65th Grammy Awards rules changes uh, that you can expect. And then on Sunday, I was just... Uh, interviewing EXO, uh, Colin Pierce, a uh, California EDM producer, uh, just a really great personality, fantastic music, a lot of fun and a fantastic story and journey. So we get to share in a lot of different, uh, a lot of different forms of media now. Uh, and all of that usually just evolves from a conversation, uh, in an email that we receive. So, that's how we start our, our uh, that's how we start our content generally, you know, and we have some foundation for what we might talk about on our Patreon account, trying to make it unique. Uh, so that way we don't have uh, duplicated content or, you know, we want, we want people maybe to know what we're doing on our website on Patreon. And we want people to know what we're doing on, uh, on Patreon on our website. Um, but there should feel like there's some exclusivity there. Um, which speaking of, if you're enjoying this and uh, watching it and you want to check us out on Discord, then uh, come to our uh, site. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You can join our newsletter and get an invite to our Discord. Um, if you're an artist, you can submit your stories and ideas to us, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I will be happy to send you that invite. So... Um, let's see, what do I want to create? I think this is not necessarily a question that everybody goes through. Uh, most of the time you're inspired to begin to create from some, uh, you know, from some kind of innate situation you are, uh, you're attempting to dial in on maybe a passion, uh, something that you can do a million times over. Uh, the, the workaround for me was music. Um, my brother had a lot more practice and a lot more discipline in terms of um, like drawing things by hand. And so even I was interested in that. I did that when I was younger, but then I kind of, I got intimidated by watching other people uh, in in their art and in drawing their art. 
and it felt like I gravitated more naturally to music. So at first that was the first, like the first angle or the first thing that kind of got me out there. Um, but what's really funny is that through musical experiences, then if we didn't know somebody that had, uh, that had, uh, you know, that had photography skills, we'd have to come up with it ourselves. Or if we didn't, uh, we burned a lot of our own CDs. We pressed a lot of our own labels onto those CDs. Um, and, and over time there's just, you start to learn that there is only so much time. And, and so, uh, for most musicians that are trying to break and, and I imagine for most, uh, streamers, um, there's a handful that I could mention like, uh, living Sat- sacrifice, living sacrifice or, uh, Hatrix, uh, that you might check out on Twitch. Um, but, uh, you know, like everybody that I know, that's a creator of some kind, uh, it's never been more accessible today for you to be in control of what that means of who you're making art for, uh, who you might be selling it to, uh, how you want to market it. Uh, you know, the, trying to engage people through live streaming platforms or in, in getting press and, there's a lot of gift to that. There's a lot of flexibility to that, but there's also uh, a limitation on how much you can accomplish. So depending on, you know, your other uh, like financial objectives, you might, you might not be able to live very long if this was the only thing that you were doing. So, um, or let's say that maybe you're starting a nonprofit and you're trying to raise funds for something that you think will benefit a lot of people. Uh, The, you're still going to have to do some sort of fundraising. You're still going to have to think about things like dollar values and monetization. And I know that not every creator is looking to do that, um, but there's usually good reasons, you know, why monetization happens. Uh, In the case of even uh, live streaming, it might be, hey, you know, if I get a little bit of money from live streaming, maybe I'll buy myself a better camera or, you know, maybe I can I pay my buddy to come in and now it's something that we can do together and uh, create content together. So um, f- financial, f- you know, financial compensation isn't uh, the only reason why uh, you'd be creating, but it's certainly an option for you. Um, who would most likely want what I create? Uh, this is discovering your market. This is your audience. This is, uh, where things like demographics and polling comes into play. Um, or it could be your friends, your family. Uh, some advice I got as a musician was, you know, start sharing some of your, your songs with strangers and see if you get as equal a response as you get to your music. Um, let's see. There I am again. So uh, who would most likely want what I create? You know, you can kind of do these samplings uh, to try to figure out uh, who's excited for you, uh, you know, to, to kind of follow you or who's excited to be involved in the kind of artwork that you're developing. Uh, how do I tell them? I, I think that, um, you know, that becomes part of the promotion, the marketing. Uh, some people would consider that the sales aspect. Uh, maybe that doesn't completely come in until you start to ask the monetization questions. Um, but how do I tell them? I mean, nowadays, uh, you know, thinking about this, like this is starting from scratch. Uh, there's one person uh, viewing as I'm recording it. And I didn't tell anybody in advance. I put up a, a post uh, through Restream two hours ago. Um, I'm here and I know that the content is relevant. I know that somebody out there is going to be, uh, have the potential now to come across this content and for it to have the opportunity to, to benefit them in some way. Um, so how do I tell them? I could have gone to any platform. I could have said, okay, I'm just going to do this on Instagram, or I could have said, okay, I'm just going to do this on, uh, on TikTok, and all of that would be valid but i also think that uh in all of this like even how do i create or what am i creating and all of these things there's a certain component to convenience uh availability flexibility uh personal preference so for me i would much rather have this kind of conversation i'm sitting in my chair uh you know i'm just using the built-in camera from my laptop 
and uh, and that's enough for me. You know, the notion of um, trying to hold my phone or or trying to hold it steady, even like I have a, a situation, a medical condition called resting tremors, uh, and it actually causes me as I'm trying to stay very still to uh, to constantly be in a little bit of fluctuation, and so. Uh, the idea of like holding a camera, even until, uh, you know, the stabilization features came into play, I, I just had no hope. I w- wouldn't be a great person to take photos of friends and family. So for me, like growing up, like that became a reason why photography didn't feel accessible was because of, uh, of my medical condition and, and not being able to take great photos on the fly, like a, a tripod or something to that uh, effect would be fine. But the, uh, you know, walking around and like taking wedding photos or, or van photos and stuff like that. I was, I, I have had situations where I've done what I could or done what I had to do. Um, but it certainly wasn't the most ideal, like art form for me to follow at the time. Um, even a lot of my acoustic guitar, uh, prevalence that comes from, uh, I started out as a bassist and I was playing through a electric bass through an amplifier. The power went out. I grabbed my dad's acoustic guitar and yeah, that the rest is history. Um, but so there's a, there's that always that conversation of like preparedness, uh, convenience, familiarity, uh, not having any electricity, like gave me the excuse I needed to try acoustic guitar. And then because of the convenience of being able to just make noise in any room of the house without having to bring everything around that, that definitely drew me into the acoustic guitar more. It also influenced the, uh, the kind of music at some point because I wasn't always attached to a, an amplifier and, and effects and overdrive pedals. So all of this to say that the, uh, the intent here is to create things consistently that, that you think that you would enjoy. Maybe you haven't discovered if you're actually going to enjoy creating this a million times, uh, you know, from now until the end of your life, but, um, but things that you might think that you would enjoy doing, uh, would be great topics. Or, you know, I think there's also, um, depending on the medium, depending on the art form, ways of tying it in, you know, you can be a runner and a photographer who photographs runners. Right. And so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential to overlap. We're seeing, uh, that a little bit more commonly in today's gig economy with, um, uh, you know, I, I think of myself as, as an example in the indie, indie music community, uh, as a writer, as a audio engineer, a songwriter, a musician, um, marketing, booking, promoting, uh, education. I mean, these are all like kind of components of who I am. And I don't think that any specific one of them has been, uh, you know, necessarily the complete measure of success, but they all tend to kind of grow and gravitate towards each other, uh, tying everything, tying everything in. So what do I want to create? I want to create something that I'm going to, that I'm going to love. Um, I create something that I'm going to love and can do over and over and over again. Obviously, I either am very comfortable with hearing the sound of my own voice or I really enjoy it. One of the two. Um, So being able to continue this, I knew before I started these streams that I was willing to commit to Wednesdays uh, at 1030 Eastern in order to uh, like give this a real shot. Like this is something that I'm excited to do. Um, I'm excited to share this experience with you. Um, And you are who I would most likely uh, expect that would want what I create uh, because you're here. Um, So who would want what I create? Um, Other creators? Uh, artists, musicians, streamers, bloggers, I kind of have that up in my, in kind of the top of my notes. Um, in here, let's see, I will go back to sharing this with you so you can see what I am typing. Let's do this the other way. Let's do the questions and the answers. How do I tell them? 
Well, for me, uh, tonight was based on the notion that uh, I was going to do a soft launch. So tonight is a soft launch. Make sure that I've understand how I'm operating um, Restream as a as a platform for doing my broadcast. Make sure that I understand how I'm operating inside of this screen. The fact that I like left my lower thirds on, uh, you know, for uh, the magazine a little on a little too long earlier. Um, so this is a soft launch to to try to work out the kinks. The extent of my promotion, if you will, of this was, uh, I'd say, ten people. Uh, let's see, word of mouth, ten people. Uh, and then the restream auto uh, image uh, post or whatever socials, and uh, then there was an announcement that was made in our uh, in our Discord channel. I went live. Uh, so why is this important? Uh, why am I documenting any of this? Well, the without having a place to start, you'll never know if you've uh, developed any growth. You'll never know if you have um, succeeded in, in meeting any of your goals, any of your objectives. So uh, d documenting is is all part of the process. So, um, in terms of like how maybe like I would tell, uh, having successfully done this, I'd say like my first thought might be to post tomorrow about it to tell people it was done. Like I did this, uh, tell people what my intentions are moving forward. Was it horrible? What you know? <laughs> Post tomorrow to tell people it was done. Tell people what my intentions are moving forward. Um, and my long term plan and, and things that we'll gravitate into is developing uh, a marketing timeline, uh, the schedule of posts, content, media, share with X, right? Um, you know, some other things uh, like how do, how do I tell them? Uh, certainly there's a ton of different platforms. Uh, knowing that there's a social, uh, how do I tell them? Maybe where do I tell them? Uh, so platforms that we engage on regularly, um, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Um, I have gotten better at consistently getting on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'm not in direct control of it, uh, but our social media manager, Mara Marcelino, is on TikTok, uh, keeping Strong the alchemical brand on TikTok, Yumara. And so uh, that may be platforms where I would where I would share uh, the post to tell people about my intentions for this moving forward. Uh, do I want to monetize this? Uh, I don't want to monetize this. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to to uh, create in terms of the publication, the magazine, uh, sustainability for our uh, our contributing writers and, and our our team, uh, like that's what I want to be able to monetize. I want to be able to show that the publication um, and all of the work that we do is able to be self sustaining. Um, so, do I want to monetize? You know, being on YouTube, I I think that there's a component to that. Uh, I don't want to necessarily monetize necessarily, necessarily. There we go. Thank you, autocorrect. Not necessarily the live stream dev broadcasts. I do want to create, we do want to monetize 
chemicalrecords.com slash magazine. Priority is the physical subscription. Just, uh, we've made it this long, but we've got a plan. And, uh, and obviously like, uh, new funds, uh, are required to start to go into a new venture. So, uh, that's being able to make sure that this is able to get off the ground is without a doubt a, a priority. How do I monetize this? Well, our, our model here is going to be the subscription model. Uh, there's also um, sponsorships and advertising. Cost, right? Well, that price is different from like consumer. So the cost of uh, from RB to C, which would be alchemical to consumer. We are charging $10 for that subscription. And that uh, includes the shipping. That includes a free digital download of, uh, of the printed zine before it releases. Um, so we might consider that of like free shipping, uh, advanced copy. So th there is some expense here tied to our shipping. Not necessarily a whole lot of uh, expense in giving it there, but there is some development uh, expense here. And there's some mailing shipping expenses here. Um, that's in terms of advertising, advertising is uh, B2B. Of course, you know, the idea here is to try to find um, an advertiser that um, vi everyone vibes with, right? Um, Long-term, long-term thinking. Uh, I think that there's a lot of information out there about uh, bootstrapping, uh, which is basically what we've done over time. And then there's a lot of talk about, you know, plans and and uh, incubators. There's a lot of talk about uh, there's a lot of talk about VC funding, <laughs> winning the lottery. Like these are all like great ways of getting a business that has capital to be able to uh, like come out of the gate. Like I, I mean, if you feel if you feel like things have changed, like things have changed, you know, because Uber, which is technically a, a theoretically like a driving ride service, right? It's really a, a, a Silicon Valley technical company. You know, um, it's um, trying to remember where I was going with that. The notion of that the service or, or like maybe the, the way that customers feel about a platform isn't necessarily like how it, how it is. Um, but the relationship aspect is the most important. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sell off some shoddy like magazine and then have a bunch of people complain and try to return it. Right. The idea is to try to, create something that has a lifespan it has a, a quality to it i would sit, use the phrase structural integrity and uh and build a, a lifelong relationship with customers like delivering the quality components that people are interested in and uh it's the same way in terms of advertisers or sponsors so you don't just want any old sponsor even though you, maybe you want the money in order to be able to uh you know, to be able to promote things uh, that you're creating or that your organization or that your company is doing. Um, but it's, you know, it's not a great, if you're not partnering with a great advertiser or a great sponsor, the people that don't share in your visions or don't share in your audience, don't share in your, your customer base, uh, like it does beg the question of like, why, why try to reach out to any of these people and, uh, and create the relationship where you're just taking their money. Um, there's 
too much work that goes into creating contacts and to making a sale, uh, you know, of any kind without, um, without spending your time focusing on the wrong audience. So, um, you want the brands that you're looking to partner with for sponsorships and advertisements to be, uh, as well executed, well thought out as the kinds of customers that you might want to bring your creation to. How long does it last? Um, you know, in music production, uh, you know, and you'll spend $10,000 for some songs, uh, you know, uh, to get three and a half minutes of music out and the lifespan of that for most artists, especially most indie artists, unfortunately is, is that they're chasing these releases and there isn't always like proper time to go into, uh, like marketing or executing these releases. So their lifespans are unfortunately relatively short. Um, you know, if you think about, uh, how long should it last, you know, a, a small bag of Reese's pieces, which I love, by the way, uh, lasts a lot less time than a big bag of Reese's pieces. In terms of what we're developing, you know, a comic book, I think, again, I'm attracted to the notion of a comic book for its, uh, uh, for its collectability component. Um, I read comic books growing up. I, I still have all of them. I own all of them. I never sold them. I never got rid of them. Um, yeah, and I dare say that I occasionally still take them out and, and read them. Um, so uh, there's also a lot of community around uh, like comics and gaming and music uh, that is very conducive. I've been brought up in all of those, you know, in all of those worlds. Um, so it feels like home for me to do things inside of this uh, like comic book format, which tends to last very long, but also like it shouldn't necessarily be uh, like so expensive uh, you know, that you can't take it with you, that you don't want to read it or that, you know, you can't enjoy it. And that's true of absolutely anything. Um, our costs, uh, you know, because we think of the collectability factor and we think of the free shipping and the digital uh, advanced copy, we think that the $10 value for the subscription is a, a good, uh, like place to, to start to see, uh, you know, like how we can kind of grow from there. I'd love to bring that cost down and, and make, make the publication more accessible. How long should my campaign be? Okay. Well, um, uh, that could be different. Like, uh, the campaign for our printed zine is probably going to last about a month because that's about the, the duration, you know, where we'll have the next, uh, the next printed cycle. Um, and it may be, uh, my gosh, it may be, optimistic to think that we can keep up with a monthly schedule, but it is certainly something that I'm very interested to be able to do. Um, so how long should my campaign be? Let's call it, uh, call it 30 day cycles. How long should it last? Uh, It, let me go ahead and clarify this as being the product. I mean, a uh, lifespan of a comic could be 60, 80, 100 plus years. Excuse me. I think that's my first time uh, doing that. I have to see if I can get like a mute switch. So what are some good goals to set? Well, I can tell you in terms of what our goals are for the publication. Uh, the publication is hoping to uh, have 500 subscribers in by the time we launch. Let's call that October 1st. Um, we're still in development and still working out uh, the rest of the campaigns. Uh, might be worthwhile to mention that if you are watching this and you've made it this far, if you would like to uh, like share your story with us, 
uh, please consider stopping back by our um, Alchemical Records website and dropping in your Let's see, dropping in your story to us on the homepage, you can just click one of these buttons. If you've got 22, 2022 release, you can send it to us here, or maybe you've got an upcoming show, uh, or you've got a tour announcement, or uh, some other story idea. Uh, we're working on some campaigns for uh, things like, what are artists uh, like struggling with? We're looking at stories along the lines of uh, like, what obstacles uh, have you overcome? Like, how can we frame that into stories that we can tell our readers? Um, I've come up with a handful of things uh, that I'd love to do. I'd love to do features on uh, specifically bassists or, or guitarists, not necessarily uh, like the principal individuals in a band, but or also um, like there's a great DMV area artist named uh, Andrew Toy, and he's a uh, drummer percussionist extraordinaire um and so like i'd love to do something in that vein so if you um want to kind of throw your hat please just drop us a line um let's see so how long should my campaign be 30 day cycles what are goals to set 500 subscribers by the time we launch october 1st um, how do we break that, uh, maybe that goal down? Uh, we've got August and September being two full months. So that's 250 subscribers in uh, August and 250 subscribers in September. Our first subscriber, uh, Oren Levine is a Washington, D.C. area jazz composer. Um, you can find his music right now. His latest project is called Groove Park. Um, and collaborations happening with artists in St. Croix and the Virgin Islands. So uh, it's a lot of fun. You should check it out. So if these are our goals, then like this is kind of what our campaign is geared to. We've got our product. We've got our purpose. We know what we're growing. Um, like how do we bring that into the concepts of like scheduled content? So we're not uh, like trying to wake up every day and wonder what we're going to post or what we're going to make a video about. Well, honestly, like I'm an old school sucker. So I made, I made a Google spreadsheet and let's call this uh, developing content scratch. So um, obviously like one of the first things we'll start looking at is, is a date. So, Right now, today's date is July 20th, 2022. It is, uh, it is a Wednesday. Okay, so let's... Make it so that way we can see what day of the week it is. Because I found that that makes it a lot easier to plan out than just looking at the date. Let's see, where is it? Format, number, date. There we are. Okay, so we'll stretch that out. So today's date, so let's call this, uh, maybe like that's the date and this is the event and we'll call date dev uh, from scratch live stream. So in terms of what, how to make this easy so, so you can uh, create consistency. Uh, like we've got developing from scratch live stream at time, uh, that is 1030 ET, see, uh, every Wednesday. Maybe just an initial note column here and that'll probably move but if we look at every wednesday now we can just drop this in we know that every wednesday we're going to have this thing and this is all part of uh like the campaign um that i'm running in order to try to like build awareness for the fact that we have this printed zine in the works and also to try to 
uh, like add value to other creators out there, or maybe somebody who's thinking about being a creator, um, you know, and just like, how do you start to organize some of these, these concepts around what I want and what I'm creating and how to get other people to, you know, at, at least, uh, be excited with you. Um, so if we continue on here, what have we got? July 20th, our first official marketing campaign here is actually going to run us, let's say through release date. So let's take a, see if we can get us to October 1st and we haven't confirmed the official release date, but let's call it the unofficial release date of printed theme. out again and again uh like this is just kind of the first step of okay we've got developing from scratch live stream so one of the first things that in three could be done i won't be able to do it while i'm actually uh, using restream for the the studio um platform here but uh one thing that could be done and adding this into our maybe more immediate task lists uh let's do Immediate action items. Okay, so state step one would be to add all live stream dates to the restream event calendar. Um, and the bulk of this conversation is going to be uh, is going to be the you know, the evolution of these conversations. So uh, I don't plan on, on doing anything really like far fetched or out of the, out of left field. We'll be uh, developing uh, this content continuously. So we won't run out of content of things to talk about where I will be is maybe at different stages uh, every week. Uh, and so um, there certainly will be an evolution there. But there's no reason why I couldn't go ahead and add all of all Wednesdays, right? Or on Twitch, I put that that's uh, when the live streams are going to occur is 1030 Eastern on Wednesday. So, you know, if somebody stops by the channel, they can see that it's going to be there and staging it on other platforms just makes sense to go ahead and get that that out of the way. Um, I don't have to change the graphics, you know, because again, the topics, the conversations aren't really going to change. We're going to be continuing to do this. So I don't have to, uh, I don't really have to create a, even a new thumbnail. Although, you know, thinking about things after the fact and things that I've learned from, uh, talking to other streamers is, you know, maybe after the fact I'm, uh, I go back and I think about, well, what did we actually cover in the video? And then maybe making my, my thumbnail post to be something that is, uh, reflected of that. Um, the, I don't know why it wants me to capitalize it or even to space it. I assume live stream is one word. Do you disagree? Please tell me in one of your uh, responses. I think live stream is one word. I don't care what my, my dictionary says. Um, not to be confused with a live stream, which I assume has lots of trout in it. Uh, so I'm going to add all of the live stream dates to the event calendar. Um, and then after that, um, maybe the possibility of like, uh, custom, uh, custom thumbnail, but I don't know that I'd have to promote it, uh, beforehand. Like, I don't think I need to create a new image for each individual meeting. Uh, maybe if I have a guest or something at some point, I could make a, a custom, I could make a custom graphic. Uh, it's not really an immediate action item. Let's call that. Okay. So I know that I'm going to have to cre create all of these on Wednesdays. It looks like I've got one, two, three, um, let's see, I'll go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. looks like 11 live streams before, um, before we go live or launch. All right. So, uh, immediate action items, add all the live streams to the events. 
next. So now I've got Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays. Uh, there's different days that we have these publication, uh, different things happening under the publication. Uh, like we do New Music Friday. So it would probably make sense if, if I could try it to tie in uh, something that I might create on Patreon on Fridays to have to do with that. Um, some of the posts uh, even, you know, that share on Patreon are ways of extending what we're doing with the website's content. Um, so for example, today we did um, the DMV uh, see, concerts dc maryland virginia post and so if i know that i'm doing that every wednesday that might be something that could make it onto the um that could make it onto the patreon but there's also the notion of uh, why should that content be duplicated uh well there's a couple of reasons uh number one is that the content on the website may not be seen by the same audience that is on Patreon. Um, and if you don't share any new content on Patreon, I mean, there won't be any kind of uh, community build around it. Uh, so this would be a way of maybe jumpstarting our content. Perhaps our content could get better, smarter in the future, but I don't think that initially I'd be opposed to just creating a similar kind of post on Patreon to talk about some of the things happening on the website. Now, does that mean every days? Uh, so Thursdays usually our feature content. Uh, Friday is new music. Publication is always off on Sundays. Um, we have ha had a couple of live streams scheduled, but uh, we are attempting to uh, try to just provide a day. And it seems to be the most chill day. Like to have a day, even though we all work remotely, um, trying to have a day where maybe there isn't any real office uh, like engagement or the chance that I'm trying to ping you to, you know, to write up an last minute or something like that. So we, we try to have consistently Sundays off. So I'm probably not going to plan on doing anything on Sundays unless I find that there's a specific reason why I should, or maybe our audience on Patreon is on Patreon on Sunday. Um, if that makes sense. So this is how content organization comes to be. It's not beautiful and pretty at first, like it's got to be really rigid and, and you have to create a skeleton and a structure to be able to figure out what it is that you want to, um, to accomplish within your parameters. Uh, in this case, I'll also be looking at things like vacation days or travel days, ways that I can maybe pre-schedule content if I still want content to go out on a day that I'm not um, able to post it uh, live on the day of. Or maybe uh, like asking a member of my team to take over that. And those are things that you just can't do if you're flying by the seat of your pants week to week. Um, most of the best streamers uh, that I know, they stream some of the very specific games on specific days or in specific time slots and things like that. And that's how you create the consistency of your audience. Call that the second, because it is. All right. So now we've got uh, at least some concepts in, in play. Let me uh, continue to share with you. So our Monday content, we don't have anything necessarily specific, um, but we do have like our watch re or watch and listen posts um, happening every day. Uh, so that might be a good day to maybe, uh, wrap up, uh, listen posts from previous week. Uh, Tuesday might be, or maybe the thing to do could be a sneak preview of what's coming up this week. Mm -hmm. 
we usually don't put out a lot of broad announcements about what we're doing in advance. And that does seem like something that could be unique to uh, unique to Patreon. On Tuesdays is our usually our team meeting. And so that's going to happen every Tuesday. I can count on that like clockwork. Just making little notes here. I mean, of course, this stuff is on, a, on my calendar, but I'm also like sharing this, uh, you know, in real time with you uh, because you can just keep on adding these rows and these columns. And, uh, you know, as long as you know that it's something you're going to be doing consistently, uh, then you can, uh, you know, create these spaces here uh, to go ahead and sync it up. Uh, and I'll do the same thing for um, Mondays and the post. Uh, actually, I know a better way to do this. So here's Tuesday, Tuesday. So we'll grab Tuesday, Tuesday, and Monday, and Monday, and Tuesday. That's control uh, left click for those of you keeping score at home uh, on a PC at least. So we get uh, all of these selected. So we should be able to insert. Oh, we can't do that because it's two days. Why is that? It seems unusual. I could have swore I did that just the other day. And, um, and I love using these tools myself. Like this helps my brain. Um, maybe you have better tools. The point here is not to get locked in to using spreadsheets. The, the idea is to find a method where organizing this information makes sense for you. That might be Trello. That might be, um, gosh, uh, Zapier or, or like running in on some automation stuff. Um, but for me, I love seeing, I love seeing it all in front of me and I uh, really start to dig into the color coordination. Um, so we've got our things, we've got sneak previews. Um, don't necessarily have to do all of this in front of you, but we're here. And so aside from the sneak previews on this, like team, the bearing that the team meeting has is that uh, we are live streaming some of our things. So this is an episode of Let Into Gold Live, um, which is not consistent, uh, but it is something that's worth thinking about in terms of uh, again, like maybe how do I bring, how do I take uh, the concept of the th conversations we're having on Lead into Gold and how do I bring that into unique content for our Patreon subscribers? So for those of you, you know, maybe just joining us, the whole uh, reason to put this together is to try to inspire uh, folks to try to get more organized into how they're uh, like creating uh, content and how to develop it from scratch. Um, at the beginning, we kind of talked about uh, making this realistic for any medium. Uh, so whether you're a musician, you know, uh, I've worked with a number of artists and consulted them in exact spreadsheets just like this. And we've found like whether we're doing booking and we're looking at, in, at available dates for, for performances or uh, individual band availabilities, uh, or if we're looking at marketing, uh, releasing a single, uh, these are all things that we've we've done in terms of maybe marketing one of our live stream events, uh, one of our Q and A's, uh, putting 
together these marketing timelines, uh, you know, allows us to try to, uh, you know, make the most of the guests that we have the opportunity to be with. Uh, let's see, sneak preview of this week's articles. That's a Tuesday. So this is going to be uh, team meeting. Oops. Speak preview, team meeting. All right, so I think we've probably uh, exhausted that uh, notion. Let's see if we can just kind of figure out um, the other the other day. So we've looped back around into uh, into Wednesday, which we know we're going to be uh, at least doing this developing uh, from scratch live stream. We've had our team meeting uh, beforehand on and Tuesdays. Uh, the team meetings usually are where we are going over our um, like updates for the week, uh, new drawings uh, from Dylan Keegan, our uh, current developer for uh, the not just the zines um, format, but the uh, hand-drawn physical artwork that's inside and the unique uh, story of the alchemist, which we're uh, excited to bring to you in print. You can see a sample of that here on the, the magazine page of just uh, some sample art that we're playing with for our uh, character of the alchemist and the world that they're going to have to inhabit. Um, so we, we might share those drawings on meetings uh, and that's really when I'll know, like maybe what content that I could be preparing for the rest of the week. Um, in most cases, you know, you're not sharing this with uh, your audience, so you can make whatever notes that you like in your own. Um, these are there are ways of saying, okay, well, for this week, um, you know, if I've said, okay, I'm going to create that post on the following day. Uh, let's see, this could be, how did I word that and live stream dates, uh, post tomorrow to tell people it was done. Tell people what my intentions are moving forward. Okay. So as we're starting to come up here on this hour mark, and this is my first attempt at doing this, I will probably start to end it here. Um, the post in Patreon about live stream wrap up and next week's topics. All right. So what would next week's topics be? We've uh, started to create an outline. That was our first our first objective was to create an outline. Then we started uh, creating our marketing timeline, which is built on uh, kind of telling the story. And there's a ton of stuff that we haven't really gotten into. I mean, we haven't really talked about costs. We haven't talked about, uh, you know, these different models uh, in better detail for, for maybe what works for you as an artist or what your goals should be. We did set some goals. Um, let's, uh, let's make another subheading here and let's call this, uh, things we accomplished. Remember to consider that's a good, that's a good heading bossy. Uh, all right, so we're going to consider custom thumbnails after the fact. Things we accomplished today. Uh, we created an outline. Uh, we, let's say drafted. Drafted an outline. We began to develop our consistent marketing strategy timeline uh, next week. 
well, if I get the opportunity to, I'd really like to um, complete the marketing timeline. Um, uh, so if we can, I'd love to complete the um, marketing timeline and uh, discuss organizing. Uh, well, let's let's start with creative. Discuss creating, organizing media, and setting realistic expectations for completion. Uh, because it, without a doubt, uh, it is super common for um, it is super common for us to think of of things that we might accomplish uh, immediately but but then we stop ourselves because it's going to take too much time um, and then we do it and we find out it was only like 15 or 20 minutes worth of work um, and there's other things you know that we want to do that we're excited to do and so we set uh, like shorter time frames uh, and they're just unrealistic time frames for um, you know like a proper course of action uh, and so the uh, the goal here is to just be comfortable, uh, to be comfortable with the fact that, um, you know, you've created something or you're committed to creating something. Uh, and that as you go through this creation process, you're already beginning to think about, uh, like how to be able to share this with people. Um, the notion of like the behind the scenes, uh, you know, you shoot a music video and you shoot the behind the scenes of the music video, which is just like another camera on top of the cameras. Right. Um, it's, it's, Technically, it's silly in practice, but it's realistically the kinds of things um, that we're excited to be a part of, that we're excited to see and to explore. Um, and it in inspires us and encourages us to further creativity. So being in this space together where we take our time and we develop something and we we talk about it, we work through it, um, that's a way different process than uh, like I have a single and I just finished recording it in the studio and I'm going to put it out there tomorrow. Uh, and then like eight weeks from now, it's like, well, why hasn't anybody heard about it? Uh, why aren't people listening to it? Uh, these are things that artists are typically frustrated about. And it's not just artists. I'm using music again because it's my background. But, um, you know, I, I think it it is perfect in terms of like deadlines. You know, oh, we've got... Uh, a contract to, you know, fulfill some graphic art design and we've got two weeks to do it in, you know, and so you don't wait until the day before the project is due. You start with building and drafting some skeleton on day one, you know, black and white outlines. Um, and maybe some of that is, you know, conversations with your client of, of, is this kind of what you were looking for? You know, before I start breaking out the, uh, the oil paints and, uh, you know, and the, full size canvases, you know, let's see if this is what you're looking for. And, uh, it's funny that funny that we know this in business. Um, but no matter what, because we're so focused on the art that we're creating, um, it isn't really until we start to hear some of these things from a third party perspective, you know, uh, a streamer asking another streamer, well, what should I really be focused on? Um, or in this case, uh, really our background here is media development, media creation, um, and, uh, you know, the printed zine thing is just kind of like tied into it. Multimedia platforms are, uh, exciting. We haven't navigated our way around all of them, but they're fun to spend, uh, time and space in. And so with that, I'd like to say thanks for, uh, you know, joining me, uh, for our first, uh, developing content from scratch. Uh, my name is Daniel Hill and, uh, I'm the founder of Alchemical Records Magazine, a Washington DC area publication, uh, bent on, um, uh, lifting up the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia music community in context uh, with the global music industry. I'd love to see the DMV recognized like uh, Nashville, New York, and L.A. Um, and we've got a lot of talented artists and uh, some really, um, uh, really inspiring organizations and individuals in businesses and community locally. Um, I think we're missing a little bit of the infrastructure, and that's one of the things that inspired me to start uh, – my record label, <laughs> which eventually became this publication. So thanks for joining me on day one. I'll be excited to pick this up next week uh, at 1030 Eastern. 
Uh, or you can also just drop me a line at alchemicalrecords.com and fill out one of our contact forms. I'd be happy to, to chat with you. Thank you so much. 